So let's suppose we have the following molecule 1,1,2-tribromoethane that consists of two different H atoms. So this carbon has one H atom, let's call it HA, and this carbon has two identical H atoms, let's call them HB. And HA and HB are different from one another. Now if we take this molecule and place it inside a proton NMR spectrometer, it will produce a proton NMR spectrum for this particular molecule and because our molecule consists of two different H atoms, we might expect two different single peaks. Now the chemical shift, the chemical peak for HA should be farther to the left or more downfield than the chemical shift value for HB which should be more upfield or more to the right. And that's because this H atom is attached to a carbon that contains two electronegative groups. And these electronegative groups will basically take away the electron density from the carbon end from the HA and that means our HA will be deshielded. While these two H atoms, the HB atoms, contain only a single electronegative group attached to the carbon and that means they will be more shielded and so the HA will be downfield, the HA will be upfield. Now if we examine the following proton NMR spectrum we see that this is the case. This corresponds to our HA while this corresponds to our HB. Now, the question that we should be asking is not which one corresponds to which one of these H atoms, but why is there a splitting taking place? Notice that even though we have a single H A atom, there are actually three different peaks. We have two peaks that are of the same height and one large peak, while this consists of two very large peaks with a very high intensity. The question is why does this splitting of our spectral lines actually take place? Why do we produce a doublet and a triplet uh, peak? Well to answer this question we have to examine the interaction between the neighboring hydrogen atoms. So basically the process or the phenomenon of our spectral splitting is known as spin-spin coupling and spin-spin coupling is basically a result of the interaction between our H atom of interest and the neighboring or the adjacent identical H atoms. So once again, the, single, the signal for HB consists of a doublet and that for the HA consists of a triplet. Now the splitting of the peaks into multiple peaks or signals is known as spin-spin coupling. This is a direct result of the interaction between our hydrogen nuclei. Now to see exactly what we mean, let's suppose we want to determine why the HA peak consists of three individual peaks. So for example, the chemical shift for HA is not only affected by the electron density of this HA atom, it's also actually actually uh, affected by the nuclei of these two H atoms. So each one of those HB atoms contains a proton in the nucleus and that proton can spin in one of two ways. It can either have a spin up or a spin down, a positive one half or a negative one half spin. So let's redraw the following molecule in the following format and we see that each one of these H atoms can either spin with a positive one half or a negative one half. 
Now, since there are two identical H atoms and each one of these can spin in one of two ways, there are a total of four combination of spins. So let's suppose that this spins with a positive one half and this spins with a negative or also positive one half. So this is one combination of spins. Now the second type of spin could be a positive one half and a negative one half. The third could be a negative one half and a positive one half and the fourth could be a negative one half and a negative one half. So we have four individual types of combination of spins that can surround that can surround our HA atom of interest. Now notice that these are actually the same exact types of combination so they produce an equivalent type of spin. So that means we can actually we can actually combine them to form a spin that exists under one roof. So we have one type of spin, the second type of spin and the third type of spin. So we see that there are three different types of chemical environments that can exist around this HA atom and each one of these chemical environments is a result of the combination, the different combinations of spins. Now because we have two identical type of spins, we basically sum them up and that means the intensity that corresponds to this specific combination of spins will be greater than the intensity of these two spins. So we have one, two, three spins and that means three different types of combinations. So we have three different chemical shifts for this particular HA atom. So that means if we examine the following diagram, the more intense or the higher signal is the signal that corresponds to these two combinations of spins. And these two adjacent signals correspond to this and this spin. So once again, the net magnetic field of our HA hydrogen can be modified by each one of the different combinations. Since there are three unique combinations, we expect three different chemical shift values and thus three signals for HA. Now, when this takes place, when we have spin-spin coupling taking place, we say that HA and HB nuclei are spin coupled with respect to one another. Now, as I mentioned earlier, notice that because there are two equivalent combinations, we have the positive one-half, negative one-half, or negative one-half and positive one-half, we have these two combinations that will basically sum up and the intensity for this will be twice as great as the intensity for these two combination of spins. Now, the distance between our two spins, let's say the distance between these two or these two spins is known as the coupling constant and it's given by a letter uppercase J and it's given in units of Hertz. Now we can also actually generalize, we can produce an equation that gives us the spin-spin coupling for any particular H atom of interest and it's given by the equation N plus 1 where N is basically the number of identical hydrogen atoms that are found adjacent to that H atom of interest. So once again, generally speaking, we can use an equation to determine the number of multiple peaks that will be found for any given H atom in any hydrogen containing molecule as in this case. So the equation is N plus 1, where N is the number of identical H atoms next to the hydrogen atom atom of interest. So, before we look at the following example, let's use this equation to actually determine or confirm that this HA atom will in fact contain three peaks or three signals as described in this diagram. So, N designates the number of identical H atoms next to our HA atom of interest. So, we have one, two identical atoms and two plus one gives us three peaks as shown in this diagram. 
Now let's take a look at this example. So using this rule or equation, confirm that the HB hydrogen atom on 112 tribromoethane will show two peaks as shown in this diagram. So if we take a look at the following HB atom right next to that HB atom, either this one or this one, there is only a single identical HA atom. We have one HA atom. So N is equal to one. So N plus one is equal to one plus one is equal to two. So that means we have two peaks of the same exact intensity. So, once again, spin-spin coupling is the phenomenon that is a result of the interaction between our hydrogen atom of interest and the adjacent H atoms that are identical with respect to one another. Now, we see that these H atoms can basically spin in one of two ways, and each one of the spins will basically produce its own combination. And these different combination of spins will basically alter or change the net magnetic field and that means for each one of these types of spins or combination of spins there will be a unique local environment in this region that will influence our chemical P chemical shift for that HA and that's why we produce these multiple peaks that each correspond to a specific chemical shift value.